Well, one of my subscribers asked me to do a reaction video to a couple of See the Pattern videos by Gareth Samuel on why electrons can't radiate due to acceleration. And I thought that would be a good opportunity to talk about stochastic electrodynamics as well uh, because that provides the solution to what's really going on, uh, although he didn't go that far. And so his title was actually Electrons Cannot Radiate Under Acceleration, which is true. And he has two videos on it. I'll put links below. And so please go watch the videos because they explain the problem very well. And I won't do my normal type of reaction video where I critique every sentence because most of what he said is is correct. Um, I mean I would certainly embellish things a little bit and do my own style but but what he said is essentially correct. So if we can think of it in terms of planets and stars don't radiate when they orbit. Gyroscopes don't radiate when they orbit. So classically bodies don't radiate light when they orbit. They don't need photons to be emitted for them to change directions. Now with electrons we do get radiation when there's an instantaneous change in their energy state or their momentum. If they collide with something or if they interact with a quantum fluctuation. In his video he mentions radioactive decay and also the spontaneous emission of x-rays from an atom and as I've stated in previous videos that I'll link below, those interactions are caused by interactions with quantum fluctuations. Generally, electron positron quantum fluctuations cause those, although that's not well known by a lot of people. So we have the classical interactions of electrical forces, magnetic forces, inertial interactions such things as gyroscopic effects. And then we also have Van der Waals forces, which are quantum field produces pressures that put pressure on bodies on all sides and can push them. And so all these things are involved in a classical orbit, but I'm not gonna go into detail on that. The thing that makes the electron different is quantum jumps. And I've discussed this before too that quantum electron positrons can interact with an electron and they do all the time. That if you have a positron electron quantum fluctuation and you have a free electron, the positron can annihilate the electron and then the quantum electron becomes free and inherits the state of the electron that was annihilated. And this allows the electron to appear to jump which leads to an effect called Brownian motion. And so this is what electrons are constantly doing because they're interacting with the quantum field. There really isn't a way to get a photon being emitted from an electron. It can't come from its rest mass. And as far as we know, there's no structural thing that allows it to emit or absorb photons. And as I've discussed in other videos, I'll link below, if, you, if we go back to the de Broglie model of the photon, uh, Louis de Broglie realized that photons are polarizable. Photons produce electric and magnetic fields when they're rotating. And the only way they can do that is if they contain a dipole. And given their energy is the same as the quantum fluctuation energy, they appear to be a series of quantum fluctuations. So instead of thinking of a photon as being some elementary particle of unknown type and structure, it's very helpful, if not correct, to think of it as a series of quantum fluctuations. So if you have radiation of an 
electron and positron pair from an electron can really only occur if you have a sort of quantum jump interaction going on. Now I became interested in quantum field theory when one of my co-workers in 1990 gave me a copy of this paper by Hal Putoff. He used what's called stochastic electrodynamics in order to try to solve the hydrogen uh, ground state problem. And stochastic electrodynamics, stochastic just means random, so don't think of it as a big word. It uh, means that you have interactions between an electron and the zero point field, or as I prefer to call it, the quantum field. And it's proposed by Marshall and Boyer, and Tim Boyer is another one of my heroes, is that you are exchanging photons between the zero point field and the electron, and that's how quantum mechanics happens. And Boyer did a number of papers that I reviewed, and Dan Cole's another one who's, I read a bunch of papers. But I'm not really an expert in SED. That's not been something I've written on. Um, but I've always thought, haha, this is it. You actually use the zero point field and you actually have real interactions behind it. It's not just some probabilistic woo woo nonsense. You have real physics. Except the problem is, is they have an electron emitting photons and absorbing photons from the zero point field, and there's no way to understand how these photons could be emitted and absorbed. But there's another variation of stochastic quantum mechanics that was developed around the same time in the 1960s, and it is based on Brownian motion. And what the discoverer found is if you have an electron undergoing Brownian motion in an atom, then that leads to the Schrodinger equation. And so both forms, stochastic electrodynamics and stochastic quantum mechanics, can be used to derive the Schrodinger equation. And then recently I was reading a paper that shows that you can derive stochastic quantum mechanics from stochastic electrodynamics. So they're really looking at the same thing, and the cause of the Brownian, Brownian motion is surprise, the zero point field. So, and, and I provide the mechanism, the quantum jump mechanism provides the actual Brownian motion that leads to the quantum mechanical effects. So, in short, that's what's really going on, and that's where quantum mechanics really comes from. We can do away with the woo-woo, non probabilistic nonsense of, we, we don't understand what's going on, because we really can relate it back to the zero-point field. And so, that's the stochastic quantum mechanics and stochastic electrodynamics together give us a complete picture of how quantum electrodynamics really happens. And it, because it is based on the zero point field, then we have a more complete picture. Because if you don't account for what quantum fluctuations are doing, you haven't solved your problem yet. You haven't figured things out. You have to have quantum fluctuations considered in a quantum problem, or you're not doing it right. And it gives you a, a mechanistic effect. You have quantum fluctuations interacting with electrons, causing it to jump, and quantum, quantum fluctuations are interacting in other ways, classically. And so you have all these effects going on that you have to consider. So you have, but you, that gives you real cause and effect relationships that are missing from quantum mechanics. And so, in part, the historical problem of early quantum theorists ignoring the quantum field or zero-point field led to them having this probabilistic woo-woo interpretation of quantum mechanics, 
while if you start with the zero point field and zero point field interactions, you get more of a, a mechanistic version of quantum mechanics that starts to really make more sense. So that's the thing I wanted to point out um, in response to the See the Pattern videos. And I do encourage you to watch more of Gary Samuel's videos. He tackles topics that I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole because they're non-standard. Um, but some of them are interesting, and you may find them interesting. And so, anyway, I hope you enjoy my video. And if you do, please like it, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe for seeing, to see more of my videos. And I have some books for sale. I don't talk about quantum electrodynamics and SED and, and SQM very much. In at, well, I don't talk about it at all in my in my books. But you can learn more about my quantum theory research if you buy one of my books. And I hope you would learn a lot. So thanks for watching.